Welcome. This is the Inclusive Naming Project in the Jenkins Project as part of She Code Africa Contribute Thon 2022. It's the 19th of April. Thanks for being here. So topics I had on the agenda, how are we doing on startup tasks? How's the progress on the Google Sheet that's collecting the data? And a timeline reminder. And timeline reminder is mostly for me and for Nafisa, but I think it's good for us to remind ourselves of the timeline reminder of the project phases and be sure that we, we know when we start things, when they end, et cetera. A piece or Nafisa, are there other topics that you'd like to put on the agenda? For me, no, I think this is okay. Okay, great. All right, well then let's let's take a look. So Peace, had you had you let's take a look at your startup document. I think I've captured it. Let's be sure that it's there and see if there are any questions that you want to ask as a result of that. So Oh, good. Okay. Photo is updated. Okay. In installed Java 8. Connected to the Contributhon channel. Joined GitHub. Blue Ocean running. Those look, those actually look very, very good piece. Congratulations. Thank you, Bo. I had, <laughs> I had lots of difficulties setting that up. And, and thank you for going through those difficulties. I hope I hope you found them instructive, and I hope as you as you go on in your career, I suspect you'll be have an opportunity to learn learn Jenkins more elsewhere. So I thanks for going through that. Anything you want to recommend? Where hey, it would be better if we did this documentation improvement or that documentation. Well, I I have. A a notepad I am jotting down all my difficulties so maybe when I'm maybe one of these the meetings I will read them out because there are some things that I had to work on by myself and it's not in the documentation that was indicated so in case someone else faces that kind of issue so they'll be able to um, carry out the tax without having any problem Good. Thank you. Thanks for keeping a notebook. And if in a future session, you'd be willing to share or, or walk us through your notebook, uh, that, would be, that would be absolutely great because then we can use what you learned to find ways to do better documentation on the Jenkins.io site and better plans for these kinds of projects. Thanks for taking a notebook. That's really great. Thank you, Mark. But I want to ask a question. Yes. Okay. While I was um while I was trying to okay, that was in number nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, not number nine, number eight. Okay. Let me see. Not no, that is not it. Let's go to seven. Okay, seven where it says the whole process was difficult, yes, took create, me several hours. A, yes, creating a pipeline using Blue Ocean. Mm -hmm. That it gave me a very, very big problem because when I did the first one, I just did it. I went through Blue Ocean and then I, when I clicked on it, I went to create a pipeline and then I inserted the URL from the GitHub um, pipeline plugin. And then it was giving me an error. Um, <sighs> yeah, so I had to I had to go through our chat on Slack. And then I realized you already explained for catering. So I had to use the method you explained for catering. While using the method you explained for catering, I realized that my Git wasn't the right, is not the right. Git, the git install the git.exe installed on my system isn't the right git I'm supposed to use for the um for the for running the um 
pipeline plugin. So I had to delete and then I had to reinstall from the one you sent, from the link you sent, I had to reinstall the Git. And then I had to go to my um, environment variable. Well, and, and there's a missing step right here. You you just highlighted for me, I failed to fail to note it here. This is missing, and I apologize for that, missing the step to install Git. It's completely missing. And, and here, here it's assumed later in this in step seven that Git is installed and configured. Now on Linux computers, it, it commonly is, but on Windows and Mac OS, it's not. So good, good catch. Thank you very much. And, and that certainly makes things much worse for your experience. Keep going. Yes. So I had to go to my system environment variable. And I had to copy my Git from my um, PC, my Git um, name, like the domain variable from my PC. And then I had to paste it on my environment variable before I was able to run it through CMD. And then, yeah, that was when I was able to undo the issue. But well, because Git was not mentioned in the um, in the document, it was it made it very difficult because we didn't know that we were supposed to install Git on our system first. Right, right, absolutely, and and that is that is an example of me being contextually blind. Uh, contextual blindness is where I do something so often that I simply forget to describe the step. For me, no computer exists that doesn't have Git installed, but that's not the reality. That's just my, every time I start with a computer, I immediately install Git, but other people don't do that. Thanks very much for catching it. Uh, thank you, Mark. But well, for the rest, I think, okay, I also had issues when I was um, installing Java because, okay. okay, yeah, because, okay, no, not Java. When I was trying to run, Jenkins when I was trying to install Jenkins on my PC because after installing Jenkins I tried to use CMD to check if um, Jenkins is loaded on my PC it was not so I didn't know that I was supposed to after installing Jenkins Jenkins no after installing Java I will have to copy the Java link and then paste it on my environment variable Ah, before, ah. before I can run it, because I realized that there are some PC that don't even need you to paste on the environment variable. Why there are some PC that when you use it, you have to run some manual um, stuff by yourself. So uh, maybe my PC is one of them. I have to everything I do, I will have to copy and paste on the environment variable, like my system environment variable before I can use it. So that made it very difficult because I was trying, I, I used different method. I couldn't get it. I had to, then I had to use that method. That was when my CMD was able to read my Java, my Apache and the Jenkins before I could load Jenkins on my PC. Another mistake I did again was I went to install Jenkins 17 version. Is it 17? 17 point something version instead of the right version of Jenkins. Yeah, I installed the wrong Jenkins version. So it's made it difficult because why I'm trying to link my Jenkins file with my Java file, it was not compatible. But I didn't notice until you corrected me on Slack that the version I was using is not the right version. So I had to, no, it's not the Jenkins version, the Java version, the Java version I was using was wrong. So I had to delete the Java version and then installed version 11 because I installed version 17 or so of my for the Java. So I had to delete and then install version 11 before I could run it. So it was a little tough, but I thank God I was able to cross pass those parts. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. And thanks for sharing. So, so I think we should plan to dedicate a, a session a future session where we give at least 20 or 30 minutes for question and answer 
based on your notebook notes about, hey, I, I bumped into this, I bumped into this, and then we can discuss all right, what's the best way to approach that? Because some of them, it may be, we update the Jenkins documentation and say, hey, the documentation on the Jenkins site should say this because it'll be used by more people. Others, it may be that we update just these documents and say, okay, this is very specific to, to the She Code Africa Contributhon, let's only update it here. Very good. Any other, any other observations you want to share? For now, I would say no, but I, for the, um, I, I had to fork the other plugin. This, the, I was given some plugin. I, when I checked the um, Google Sheets, I saw some plugin I was given to a um, name. Then I forked the Miller plugin, but, I thought it not because there was there were any uh, mistake in the name or any name correction. I thought it because when while I was trying to work with the um, with the blue, um, pipeline plugin, I was having lots of issue. So I had to, I was thinking it's the plugin that is having the issue. So I had to say, let me try another plugin and see if it will give me the same issue. I didn't know that I was the one having the issue from my configuration. So that was why I had to fuck it. But after fucking the plugin, when I went through the naming, I realized that there was no, there was no error in the names. And I remember last meeting, you indicated that when there is no need to fuck a plugin, um, when there is no correction or any changes to make, we should not fuck any plugin. So that was why I had to tell you now. So that I mm. didn't fuck it not because there were there was any error. I was just I was just trying to see if the plugin, my mistake was from the plugin. That was why I had to fuck the Miller plugin. And and very well done. It's it's actually harmless. It does no harm if you fork extra plugin, if you fork multiple repositories, you are welcome to do that. My only reason for noting that you don't have to do it is you may not want to clutter your, your own GitHub environment with forked copies of repositories that you don't need. So, so there's no harm that you did a fork. It's good practice. And you can actually, so for instance, when I do, I can delete forks all the time. And, and so there's no, no reason that you can't just go ahead and delete it later if you don't need it but no harm that you forked it, good for you. So, so you're saying, I think what you just said also is you looked at Mailer and you didn't see any, any changes that were needed. Is that correct? Yes, I didn't see any changes. Good, very good, okay. And, and that's, I would have hoped for that because many of, the, many of these very, very frequently used plugins have been visited by others trying to re resolve issues with inclusive naming. So the fact that you found no, no changes is, is a good thing and it's even expected. We may, in the first 40 or 50 plugins, may only find two or three that need any change. And that's okay that, because that, that's a, actually a big win because that means you'll be able to work on things that are lower on the list and help with them. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so so that's really great. Thanks for thanks for looking at Mailer and thanks for doing the checks. Very good. Hello. Hi, Nafisa. Hello, Mark. Um, I just I need to direct this to Peace. Uh, I noticed I don't have access to view your reports uh, file. So I would appreciate if you can grant me the access to that. Oh, and it looks like, well, I should be able to grant it, but I, I am not seeing your email address in my convenient location. Just a minute. It was, <laughs> well, I can fix it or piece. You can fix it later or I can fix it. It's, okay, it's easy just, to do. I Thanks. Thought I should your attention to that. Yes, yes, thank you very much. That, that hints that there may be a, a challenge here because this link 
this this shortcut in the Google Drive is not a guarantee that permission has been granted, whereas the permissions on the folder generally grant permissions, but not for shortcuts. So, so that's a reminder that we've got to be sure that everyone gets access to those files so that they can see them. Thanks for catching it. That's great. Well, did, um, Sorry, did I, have, I don't have your email, email address. Um, I have a question for um, just a minute about uh, the reports. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. To Nafisat, um, are we supposed to update the documents or update on Slack? So both. So both. Okay. And, and the reason the reason I've preferred the document, it gives us a place to focus 100% on you and your experience. Okay. And you can take notes right there, but, right there. but if you have a question or a problem, then Slack is, a, is the best place to do it because then other people see your question and they benefit from the answer. Okay, thanks for that, Larry. So for me, I, I, I like, I like the, the, the document as a notepad or a place where you, you scribble quick notes or, or make a comment, oh, this was broken or, oh, this didn't work the way I expected or, well, that was a surprise. Um, and then when you hit a problem that needs someone else's help, then we do it in Slack because that way we can share the, sh share the solution with others. Okay, all right. I think what I'll do is update for each of these steps is to update done so that uh, even for Nafisa, she can see what has already been done. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. That's great. Peace, you had a question? No, I wanted to tell um, Nafisa that I didn't have a email address to add that to the file. Oh, okay, I'll drop that in the chat section. Oh, right. That actually, that's a good one. If you can put the put your email address in chat, or I can get it from this location right here. I have a sheet that has this one has all the email addresses on it. So if I open this, so now I can just do the share. So Peace, do you mind if I share it with her? Yes, you can. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Got it. Um, share it with me too. Thank you. Okay, you bet. All right, so Catherine. Actually, I really should just share it with everybody, but I don't know how to do that easily. So we'll do the, the short one first. And actually, we only want to allow others to comment, not to be editors. Just a minute. So... And I don't really need to be an editor either. There we go, good. Oh, oh no, I don't wanna stop my ability to share. Okay, editor, there we go, commenter, save. Okay, got it. Excellent, thank you. So any other questions on your getting started experience? For me, I think that's all for now. Okay. All right. So then we had we had listed a, a let's see where oh here it is. In this one, identify terminology errors in searching the Jenkins repositories, looking for for things that need to be corrected and using this Google Sheet. Now, piece, I see that you'd you or you described that you'd worked on Mailer. Uh, Catherine, have you had a chance to look at one of these yet or still in your startups, startup phase? Um, I'm still figuring out the pipeline issue that I shared on Slack. Okay. Um, but okay. uh, tomorrow I should tackle at least one. Great. One okay. Well, and, and we could take time today to work on that pipeline issue that you had in Slack. 
Uh, if, if you're okay with that, I think that's a good, a good use of our time here. Uh, if you're willing, go ahead. No, I'm saying that's okay. We can talk about that. Okay, great. So do you want to share your, are you, are you on a computer so that you could share your screen so that we could look at it together? Yeah, I'm on my laptop. Uh, just Okay, so minute. I'm going to stop sharing. And okay. I think you've got permission. Yeah, you have permission to share your screen. So if you can share your screen, let's look at it together. And we can talk about the problem you see. Okay, just a minute. All right, you can see it. Ah, good, right. Okay, so this is this is the pipeline bill. Okay, so so this one highlights all sorts of interesting challenges. So the pipeline build step plugin, if you'll click, click on the master thing here or on any one of the others, any one of those rows that say branch indexing, click that. Mm -hmm. And now it opens to us a, oh, hey, something's gone wrong here. Scroll upwards and let's look at what the message says. So it says branch indexing, connecting to some place. So, Catherine, can you zoom your screen? I don't think I can see it. Is it clear now? Yes, it is. Thank you. Great. So it says start of end of pipe, start of pipeline line four, end of pipeline line five, and then it says no such method error. That line six is this big long line of, wow, there are a bunch of possibles that no such, such method area, so scroll back up to it, says, hey, it was looking for a method named build plugin. Mm -hmm. And your Jenkins right now doesn't have a method, a, a domain specific language, that's the expansion for DSL, a domain specific language build plugin method. And it doesn't have it because there are also there's a pipeline library that's used by all Jenkins, by most Jenkins plugins to do their builds. And that pipeline library is specifically tuned to run on ci.jenkins.io, but it's it's not ready for someone who's not really ready to run a full CI system like ci.jenkins.io. It assumes things like you must have a Windows agent available and you must have a Linux agent available and you may need to have Docker available and you may need to have cloud resources available. All sorts of things that, so using the build step plugin as your test case for a multi-branch pipeline is, is not likely to succeed because it's too comp, it has too many complicated assumptions about what the, what the initial setup needs to be. So instead, let's go up to the top level mm -hmm. of, um, of this. So let's see if, if you click in the top right-hand corner, the, let's see where, the X that's in the top right. And now if we go to pipelines, top center, and new pipeline, let's create an, an empty pipeline here. Okay. And instead of, yeah, so GitHub is a good choice. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to look at your GitHub repositories. And this will probably tell us, hey, we don't have one that's really well suited. So scroll through this list. Mm -hmm. Is any one of these a project that you'd be willing to to create a new Jenkins file for? Um, yeah, the e-commerce e -commerce site. Can oh, okay, great. Oh. Yeah, okay. So click Create Pipeline. Pipeline. 
So now what this is doing is it's checking, oh, is there a Jenkins file already? And it says, oh, there isn't. Since there isn't a Jenkins file, it's putting you into an editor that will let you create one. And now you're sort of, this is sort of advanced stuff here, but click the plus sign and name this stage. Let's call this stage checkout. Okay, and add a step with a big plus sign there. And here we're just gonna print a message. So print message, um, fake checkout. This is, this is just for experiments purposes. So fake checkout and now click on the plus sign over on the center again on after checkout, we're going to actually, let's just save it. Let's save it for now and watch this. So save, click save in the top right hand corner. And we want to, and, and a good description might be something like uh, add a skeleton Jenkins file. And we want to commit to the master branch. So click save and run. And what this is going to do is now it's going to say, hey, let's actually store this to GitHub. It's going to now check out your master branch and it's going to execute that pipeline. Now that pipeline that we executed is really kind of dumb, right? It just does nothing. It says I'm doing, it, it gives one message and then it'll be finished. So click on that master and let's see how it's doing. Good, okay, so notice that it says check out from version control. So if you click on that row, it will expand it and you can see what it's doing. And here it is, it's saying, I'm cloning your repository, github.com, Catherine Kiru, e-commerce site API. And now that it finished that checkout, I put a message in there that says fake checkout. And if you open expand that one, you'll see the message says fake checkout. Yeah. Okay, so there's step one. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a pencil icon. This lets us add new stages to it. So let's add, after checkout, we're gonna add another fake stage. We're gonna call it, you, what you just did was you added one that's parallel. Ooh. Okay. We want to add one to the right of it. So what you did is great. You, okay. You can also, you can also cancel it, but on the right hand side of the name, your stage icon. Okay. That's great. So just click that pencil. Yeah. To the plus to the right. And now let's call this one build. That's a pretty common thing to do. And as in the add step, we're just going to do the same thing again of echoing a message. It's not going to actually do the build yet. Okay. So print the message and the message should be fake build. And now if you save that and it will say, it, yeah, that's right. Add, add a build step. And the reason we're doing these things as fake is it's so fast to run them while we're thinking about what should the pipeline be. Okay. So now if you click ma the master row there, it should take us to, okay, there's one, let's go. It should show us another one running. Okay, so let's go go back in the top left-hand corner, click e-commerce site. There it is. It's already run it. It's already finished the run. Let's go look at it and see. And you see now you've got a checkout and then a build and it gave your message. So now let's do one more up to that pencil icon again in the top right-hand corner. And we're gonna add another stage called test. So check out, build, and test. And again, because, because I'm, I like things to go very fast, just make it print a message, fake test. 
Now on your e-commerce site, you may have real tests and you may have a real build process. Save this. Right. And now because we used because we used Blue Ocean, it actually did something for us. Could you click on the three that's running now? Because there's one more change we need to make. Okay. So click the pencil icon. The, I made a mistake when I had you define this initially. That stage that's called checkout is actually not needed because it's implicit. It's by the mere act of attempting to do a pipeline, it by default does a checkout. So click on the checkout node over there on the checkout step, right? And now on the right-hand side, there are three dots immediately to the right of the word checkout. Click that and click the delete because we don't actually need to do a checkout. It's automatic. Now save it. And yeah, remove the, I make the comment, remove the useless checkout step. You could also put in there, Mark Wait made a terrible mistake. He told me to do something that wasn't necessary. <laughs> That's okay. Remove the checkout step, okay. All right, so what you've now defined is you defined a pipeline using Jenkins Blue Ocean that has two simple steps in it. Now, the, the, the other thing that this has given you and didn't even bother to tell you it's given you is this is what's called multi-branch. So that if on GitHub, on your um, GitHub repository, you create a new branch, Jenkins can be taught to automatically create a new job to watch that new branch. Okay. And so it, it, makes, it makes things much easier for you as an administrator of a Jenkins system because someone adds new work by creating a new branch on their repository and Jenkins will just automatically create the job. And when they're done with that work, Jenkins will automatically delete the job. Okay. All right, that helps it. This, okay. Yeah, this, this, um, this helps. So one thing, um, wondering is this that the point of this is to help um to help developers um in the pipeline of of uh, of committing their work to github correct yeah so okay. so it's pretty common for developers to want to know that a recent change they made didn't break things they, they don't want to break things by making a change that, and so what we do typically is on every change made by anyone, we rebuild the software and we rerun all of its automated tests. And that's what this is doing. So the, the every time you commit a change to e-commerce site and Jenkins is running, Jenkins can see it and it will say, oh, I should run this, this job to be sure that it's still okay. Now, admittedly, what we created here is is completely empty, right? It doesn't build anything. It doesn't actually test anything. Okay. All right, that helps. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, one last question. Uh, does Jenkins work almost the same as Jira? They're, they're quite different in the sense of what they do. So Jira is used to track, track issues track tasks, track work. So in the Jenkins project, we use Jira very happily to track our, our bug reports and to track enhancement requests and to track effort on major projects like supporting Java 17. Those are all things that we do in Jira and Jira lets us track that progress very, very well. What we use Jenkins for in the Jenkins project is to watch our development changes to be sure that they are stable, reliable, and that we can ship the product. We use Jenkins to compile the product 
to deliver the built the build results to various distribution places like the Windows MSI file, like the Debian RP, the Debian Deb file, or the Red Hat RPM file. So each of those delivery activities happen in Jenkins because JIRA is not really focused on delivery. JIRA is focused on tracking bug reports, tracking enhancement requests, and helping us know when we're done with those kind of activities. Did, did that answer your question? Yeah, that answers the question because from what I understand now, JIRA is, uh, is like a tool within Jenkins. Uh, well, not Mm -hmm. it, it, they're they're two different they're two very different tools and they handle okay. different different parts of the software development life cycle different parts of of software development activities jira does does issue tracking and it does work tracking very very well what jenkins does is automation of activities that are part of the software development process like compilation and test and deploy. Okay. All right, that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Sharing now? Yeah, uh, yes, if you're if you feel like you're done, we can have you stop sharing and we'll switch switch back. I'll start sharing again. Very good. Catherine, thanks very much for letting us letting us look at your screen. So you should see a worksheet on my shared screen. Is that the screen that I'm sharing? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. All right, so uh, we've got about 15 minutes left in our meeting today. We had, we had identified this getting you started. It feels like you're both getting started very well. Maybe we could take a few moments and take a quick look at the timeline to be sure that Nafisa and I know where we're at in terms of the timeline. And, and I apologize in advance. I, hadn't, I should have checked this before we started our meeting. I didn't. So we're going to look at it now together. So this is the timeline. It was right. Okay. So here we are. We are in boot camp phase. Working on assigned project ideas, mentoring, and weekly calls between mentors and mentees. Okay, good. So we're, we're, we're started. And so I think we're ready for the two of you to get started on working through that sheet and trying to identify places where a change is needed and then have you submit your first changes proposing fixes to those things. Now, now, there may be, I suspect there may be bumps and bruises because we haven't yet in startup phase had you submit any pull requests. So that may be a challenge here and let's use Slack to encourage you. Or, or if you'd like, we could go through a, a demonstration of how to do a pull request now, what, whatever you would prefer. Uh, I almost said that, that if you could guide us on how to do a pull request, that would be better. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, let's do that. So that way we've got it recorded and, and you can refer to the recording. So, so we need to find an example of something that has a, that has a, a, a naming reference that's not inclusive, right? That uses either the word master or the word slave or the word uh, blacklist or whitelist, those are all, all non-inclusive terms that we would like to eliminate. So let's, let's try one like, and this is me making, making guesses. I'm going to try JDK tool because it's a relatively older plugin, not very frequently maintained. So you notice what I did is I clicked this link on JDK tool. It took me to the plugin the plugins own page. And on this page over here in the links section is a link to the GitHub repository for that, that plugin. So I'm going to go to that repository. And now here, I'm just gonna look for master in this repository. Okay, that's, that's the, and remembering the rules say, if it's in Java source code and it is a, a Java identifier, in this case it is, master is a 
a master to slave callable is in fact a Java identifier, we can't change it. So that's not something we could change. Let's try slave. Nope, that's not a problem either. Whitelist. Nope. Blacklist. Okay, so my first attempt failed. I thought that would work. Sorry, Catherine, that one's no changes needed. Let's try a different one. How about let's try, let's try something. I'm gonna jump further down because there are, there are probably things later on that I could use. Let's try Docker Commons, this one right here. Okay, so try here and now master. Okay, so this one just has in a YAML file, that's a configuration file. This one is just a comment and this one is an identifier. So that didn't help. Okay, this one is in a test, a test, a test, more tests. Ah, found one, maybe, okay. So at least here it's, this is a Java doc comment and Java doc comments are safe to change. So I'm gonna go ahead and propose a change to this one. And so the way I do that is notice that I'm, let's make this big enough to read. Is that, is that readable text size on your screens? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, it is. So I remember that I found here a use of the word slave. And here it is. So I'm gonna propose a change to this and I need to do that by editing this file. This, so I want to click the pencil icon here. And now I'm going to search for slave. Oops, has it already been fixed? No, there it is, such as a slave, okay. So the search facility is available here. like this, so I, I clicked over there and now it will show me that one. And then if I keep looking, there it is. So, such as an agent, okay? So that is a valid correction. It's safe to do because it's in Javadoc. It's textual description, not an identifier. So now I'm going to save this as part of proposed changes. So um, slave, whoops, use agent in the Java doc rather than slave. Oh, excuse my fat fingers. How did that do that? Okay, there we go. And there is, there is the correction. And now I've got this green button here that says create pull request. So I'm going to click the green button, create a pull request, use agent in the Java doc rather than slave. And now I'm gonna fill out this checklist and this checklist that you see here is a fairly standard thing. And the way you complete each checkbox is where you see open square bracket, space, close square bracket, you insert an X between them. So it looks like that. In my case, I am definitely opening from a, from an, a, a branch, not the main branch, because notice this says patch dash one. The title represents what I want to have in the change log. Use the agent in the Java doc rather than slave. So I get to make an X there. Please describe what you did. 
I updated the text. And so let's say that here, update java.comment to use agent rather than slave. Whoops. Okay, I don't have any relevant issues to link to, so I can check it because there isn't a relevant issue. Likewise, there isn't a relevant pull request. Ensure you have provided tests. I don't have a way to test this. So I'm gonna use this two tildes, the curly character, because what that does in Git mark, GitHub markup is it makes the text be strike out, struck through. So now notice that there's this preview thing here that will show how it looks to people who read it. So I went back to editing mode. In preview mode, notice that it wrote a line through the text because this is one I cannot, I'm not going to satisfy. I'm not going to provide tests for a change to a Java.comment. comment. Any questions so far? I want to ask a question, please. Um, does it mean we don't need to fork a repository before creating a pull request? Well, it, it, good question, very good question, because notice what this says. It says that it's already forked the repository for me. And it did that for me as part of creating the pull request with this technique. So by my using GitHub to do the, to do the, the editing, the change, it forked the repository for me. Now let's, let's see that that's the case. Let's go look. So if we look at my GitHub repository, just to be sure, git GitHub and the repository is Docker Commons plugin. So if we look at, at my list of repositories, oops, bad, my list of repositories, Docker Commons plugin, there it is. It just barely forked it for me. Updated three minutes ago. So by my using the GitHub editor, I, it, it forked it for me. Did that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay, any other questions before we go further? None from me. Have, I do have a question, but I think it's better to ask after this. Okay, all right. So then I'm gonna go ahead and create the pull request. So this now tells the this now creates a pull request in the list of other pull requests. And now the, the people who maintain this plugin can see, hey, here is a, a proposed pull request to update the, this piece of text in the source code of this plugin. And now for, for record keeping purposes, it helps us if we record that that was done by putting that there. Nafisa, what was your question? Okay, um, my question is on, when you try to search for the um, names you're trying to change, the master or the slave um, keywords, there are times it came up in method names or um, package names. Does it mean they don't have to change search or is there a particular step they have to take to change that it, it you cannot change them so it's it's quite important that you don't so let's let's look at one example and see that so let's let's search for for master and for instance if someone attempted to change this use of the word master in the object in the identifier master to slave callable they will break compilation of this code and and okay. we, we don't want to break compilation it's also not relevant to change this because these identifiers are typically not shown to users at all okay. did, did that answer your question yes very much thank you yeah, so, so that part of this is, is why we need your software skills so that you understand, oh, I should not propose a change that would break compilation. Because if I'm going to break compilation, that's not going to help the people who maintain the plugin. 
they're going to see, oh, you submitted something and it didn't even compile. You clearly didn't, didn't do the, the usual checks that are needed before you submit a pull request. So in this case, because it's just textual changes and we choose narrowly which ones to do, I could avoid, I need to compile it locally and run tests locally. Instead, I just made textual changes there. Okay. Now let's go back because there, there's another piece of this. We're almost out of time, but I wanted to show you one more piece. So, so after I submitted my, my pull request and we see the pull request on screen, this commits tab shows me, here's the thing that I did. The next tab over checks shows me the checks that are running to see if my change is a good change. And what this does is it, this is ci.jenkins.io running checks on Linux and on Windows to see if, my, if the change I made is a good change. And if I want to see more details about what's happening there, I click this link and it takes me right to, right to ci.jenkins.io. Now I can even open Blue Ocean here and see how it's doing. So you'll see here, Blue Ocean has done the checkout on Linux. It's done the checkout on Windows. It's now building on Linux. And if I open this, I can see the progress it's making. It's by this point now running automated tests. And same on Windows, we hope that Windows is a little slower. So it's also running automated tests. That's good. So all of that, because I changed one word and submitted a pull request to make that change. Um, I have a question. So that process of checking um, on Jenkins, is that what it means to build a plugin and test and test it? It, it is. That's, that's one of the ways. So this is definitely building the plugin and it's running automated tests. Now, many of us like to also do interactive tests when we do significant changes, but, but these small changes of just changing text, it's okay if we just rely on the automated tests. Okay. Um, so that means because in the, in the task outline under the and at the task and at the task session, it says we are changing the terminology and building the plugin and also testing it. So does this process cater to it or is there another? Is oh, there another oh, okay. Process? Right. Okay. So this one in this task list, this is would be used for the cases where you had to make a local change because it was so large that you want to be sure that you can do all the tests locally. So this, very good question. This one is talking about how do we, if, if I have to make so many changes that I, need to, that I need to do that locally on my computer, then these are the steps I do locally on my computer. So what this, is, what this task is basically doing is replicating what Jenkins is doing for me on ci.jenkins.io. So did that, did that address your question? Um, it did, um, but just further clarification for this okay. particular um, tasks that we have, do we prioritize um, local testing or do we uh, just rely on the automated tests on Jenkins? You should, my preference is that you would rely on the automated tests from Jenkins okay. so that you don't have to do these steps at all. Now, particularly for your first several, it's best if they're relatively small so that, so that I can work quickly with you and you can work quickly. So in that case, you would just do it from GitHub. Now, you may find some plugin in your review here where you, you discover a plugin. Let's say, let's pick an, a, a potential one like you might find that good choice. Um, Pipeline Maven is a relatively older plugin, and you may find it's got many, many problems in it. And it's got so many problems in it that you'll be faster doing the changes locally. And if that's the case, then you'll need to do the build and test yourself locally. Let's see if I was right. Let's see how many cases it has. 
I don't see, a, oh, oh yes, okay, there's a, <laughs> that's very good. This, yes, so, so this one has a number of places where it's got interesting things, and this one may be one where you have to say, I'm going to do this one locally because I have to evaluate the specific, specific things. So preference, first, first preference is use the GitHub editing UI first wherever you can. D does that help? Um, it helps. Um, though I'm thinking for the next session, um, we can do a demonstration of, of that local build and test process. Yes, absolutely. Exactly what I wanted to say. The next session, please, let's... let's have an example of what you're trying to talk about because it's kind of confusing. Okay, yeah, so next session, next session, let's go through this sequence and be sure that you're comfortable with this sequence. And absolutely, I like that. Now, would you like to try for a next session later this week rather than waiting all the way until next week? Or do you want the time this week to work through some of these so that you've got you've got time to make progress on them, and then we'll just meet next next Tuesday. What's your preference? For me, I feel we should work on the plugins naming this week. Then next Tuesday we'll work on the other one. Great. Yeah, because it's the week is already short. So this week we could focus on doing the few tasks. Uh, a couple of tasks that we can manage and then now next week we do the demos excellent we'll we'll do that then i'll look forward to meeting with you next tuesday same time and we will we will review at that point how to do this more complicated thing of a local change to test drive revising terminology building the plugin and testing great all right thank you Thank you. Uh, re recording should be available within the next 24 to 48 hours so that you can refer to it. Thanks very much. Thank you for your time. Bye and talk to you next week and in Slack between now and then. All right. Bye. bye.